Hello, today I would like to give you a basic training in operating of a Polish tactical VHF radio model number T2. We are going to start from the front panel and how it looks like and then to the programming. So the interface is pretty simple. We've got a bind post for attaching a field telephone and interconnecting radios for retransmission. We are not going to touch that part today. We've got our main switch on the bottom position is off. If we flip it up, we are going to enable our radio. Then we've got the volume adjustment selector that go with a click. And as you can see here, we've got the loudest volume and here the quietest one. Here is the most important part. This is a fuse. In case your radio is not powering on, you have to remove the fuse and replace it with the value that you can read it here. If your radio after replacing fuse also do not start, there is also a fuse on the battery, but I'm going to touch that in the recharging battery section. Under that cover, we've got a multi-pin connector that is being used for your headset and for transmitting data. So it has a multi-pins for different applications. This is KDU. The keyboard display unit can be detached from the radio and you can have radio at your back and this unit in front of you. Behind the KDU there is a hub battery, the battery that is used for retaining your memory settings. If you would like to put the battery or replace, you are going to undo those three screws and you are going to fit your battery and then after removing the main battery all your channel settings are going to be preserved. I noticed that after replacing the main battery without having the hub battery your frequencies are going to be preserved. So I'm pretty sure that for a very brief amount of time there is some capacitor that going to store that data. So you should be okay with not fitting the battery as long as you are using the main one. On that side, we've got a whip antenna connector that is going to be used for attaching the Kulikov antenna or the end feed terminated by a resistor, the directional long wire. This is how the Kulikov antenna looks like. It is very durable, made out of metal. And inside of that metal, there is a steel wire. And assembling is extremely nice. The process of erecting the antenna is extremely simple. So as you can see right now, it's completely limped. Here is a ball that is going to be aligned with that part and I'm just going to snap it like this and then grab that collar and slide it down. And now the antenna have a tension and can be used for a field application and it has a small amount of capability of being bent without damaging the radio to make it limped in seconds you just go like this and you can hide it to connect the antenna into the radio as you can see we've got a notch over here and we've got a bar that is go in the middle we are going to arrange that notch we're going to put it in it is a spring loaded and I'm going to twist it like this. And right now the antenna is connected. But to make it extra secure, 
you are going to twist that screw and now it's not going to go anywhere. It's completely tight and you can erect it that way while being connected to the radio or you can use a standard 50 ohm BNC connector for attaching any external antenna, rooftop, car, whatever you need. Another most important part after attaching the antenna is your headset. This is the headset, the earpiece and the microphone. Then we've got our PTT switch which have uh, two buttons. This is the PTT for talking. That one is for calling. This is for uh, signaling that you would like to transmit and receive a call that is going to transmit a special tone. So for your normal talking, this is the PTT that you are going to be using. Now let's connect our headset into the multi-pin connector. We've got a notch here, we've got a notch there. So we are going to go like this. And we are going to lock the screw a couple times until they are going made together. Let's begin our basic programming tutorial. I've got hook up the battery at the rear end of the radio. I've connected the headset and attached the whip antenna. And we are ready to start programming our radio. The programming is divided into two main steps. The first step is tying channel to frequency and that part is going to be stored into the memory and the second part completely divided from channel and being a global setting is selecting mode of operation. So those things are completely separated and you can program your first channel into frequency, you can program second channel into frequency number two and then select mode of operation and you can switch between channel one and channel two and your mode of operation going to stay the same. You are only going to change your frequency. The radio was stored without hub battery that is under KDU. That's mean all settings are being lost. When we are going to do a first power up, the radio is going to show us a U1 error and sound an error tone. In normal situation, that's going to mean that our radio is broken and cannot lock into the frequency and your radio needs service. But since we do not have program any frequency, then we can safely ignore that error and just enter correct frequency. The most common problem that people have got with this radio is that you cannot reprogram frequency on channel that is actively selected. That means if you are on channel one, you are going to see the channel one, you cannot go and reprogram the frequency for channel one. You can change the mode of operation but you cannot change the frequency. The only exemption from that rule is going to be when your radio is totally erased, then you can start and program any channel you want because your radio is not working on any channel. So the first power on, you can program any channel. It does not need to be a uh, channel number one. Let's begin our programming. As you can see on the KDU, the buttons have a double function. They can be used for selecting number 
for channel or for programming frequency or selecting mode of operation. Today we are going to cover basic FM mode of operation through a directly attached headset. There are possibilities to remotely control that radio via field telephone or create a retransmission station, but we are not going to touch that. Let's begin. I've got the radio volume selected to the lowest possible settings and I'm going to flip the switch into the on position, which is upward. We can hear the distinct tone telling us that we've got a problem, but we cannot see anything on the display. To wake up the KDU, and we are going to do that before of each operation, we are going to press the function key, and the display has been lit, and we've got the U1 error. As I told you, we can safely ignore that error. As you can see, the KDU is turn itself off to conserve power, so each programming and selecting mode of operation have to be done in that time frame. If you are not going to touch any key, you are going to be cancelling the operation that you are doing. Let's program our first channel and I'm going to program channel number 2 just so you can see that we can start with any channel. To do that I'm going to press the function key, the programming and then I'm going to select from the keypad which channel I want to program. Function, program, channel number 2. And we've got a question what kind of frequency I'm going to 4, 2, 0, 0 megahertz. We've got, uh, we can go and program another channel, but I'm going to leave it as is. Let the KDU turn itself off and we can still hear an error and that's because we are not on channel number 2. We have not told our radio to go into channel 2. To change the channel you are going to press the function key and then any channel. Of course we've got program only channel number 2 so I'm going to go function and select channel 2. Function channel 2 and as you can see the channel number 2 is being selected and here we can see that we've got a mode of operation in the FM. As you can see there is no error tone, the radio is on the channel number 2 in the standard FM simplex mode from a local headset. The radio is ready for operation, we are on channel 2 with a local control via our headset. If I would like to reprogram channel number 2, I'm going to show you that is not possible and this is not a problem. Function programming channel number 2. As you can see we've got our frequency, we can use that for taking a quick look what kind of frequency do we have a program but I cannot change the frequency. You cannot reprogram the frequency that you are currently on to. If we would like to reprogram channel number 2, then we need to program another channel. So let's program channel number 1. Function programming channel number 1 and I can enter 40 megahertz, just like that. We are still on channel number 2, as you can see, and to jump into channel number 1, I'm just going to press 1, and I'm right now on channel number 1. To reprogram our channel number 2, I'm going to select function, program, channel 2, and now we've got a blinking and I can change our frequency without any problem. As a quick recap, let's program a couple more channels. 
So in normal time that looks like this, function programming channel number 3, 4, 3, 0, 0 megahertz. And now I'm going to jump to channel number 4, 4, 4, 0, 0, 0, channel number 5, 4, 5, 0, 0, 0. This is how looks the programming in real time. You do not have to wait to anything. You can enter all your settings very quickly. And now jumping to channel number 5 is function key 5 and we are on channel 5. As you can hear the squelch is open so let's select the mode of operation. To select the mode of operation we need to have that part blinking. We will be able to select the output power. We will be able to select the squelch and the mode of operation that is going to be remote controlling or a local one. The local one mode of operation that is going to be def default for audio operation is under number one. The squelch is under number four and the letter B. And the power level is on under the key 8 and the letter P. So let's go to the mode of operation, function key. Now we are in selecting channel. I'm pressing it second time and now our mode of operation is blinking. I'm going to press the B and the radio is quiet and we've got a small dot over there. Now I can adjust the power and now we've got indicator that we've got the high power. We've got the low power, high power. We've got squelch disable and squelch enable. That setting is global for all your channels. So I can go back to the channel selector and I can go to channel number one. I'm retuned to channel number one and we can hear a squelch being open but that's because something is going on on that frequency. If we jump to frequency on the channel 2 we are quiet, on channel 3 we are quiet, channel 4 we are quiet, channel 1 there is something going on. So as you can see this is a global settings for all your channels. Also the power level and the mode of operation. So if you've got anything else than that letters, that means you are accidentally press something from those modes and you have to go and press the number one. And this is a standard local mode of operation from the headset. So right now the radio is ready to be used. If we would like to give a quick peek what's going on, we press the function key once. High power, channel number two, we've got a noise squelch enable and the mode of operation. If I would like to see what's got, what kind of frequency do I've got on channel number two, I click the programming and select channel two and we've got our frequency. I cannot change it because I'm locked into the frequency channel. So I have to switch. So I go to channel number one. And now I can program channel number two. And I can go and enter any frequency I would like. So right now the radio is ready to be used. If we turn it off and cycle it on it will go into the last use frequency, it will retain all the settings and it's ready for being used. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you find it interesting, see you next time and bye bye.